by Casey Wendell. By Colin Ross. And, 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 and you know, he, he ripped. You flew off the handle now. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian's fucking brilliant. I love yeah, that. It's good. Yeah. So, some people call me Leroy. It really annoys me. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's important. It's important. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I, I think the difference is that there's a, you know, with Brian with a Y, Brian with an I, I think they're pronounced exactly the same. Brian is still pronounced yeah. exactly the same. But, you know, I guess that's fantastic. Kind of anyway, uh, Brian's going to do some poetry. So um, I'll hand over to you. Okay. Yeah, cool. Woo. Well, I've got two or three things prepared this evening, depending on how patient y'all are. Um, I was going to start out with a more serious, or I guess lower one, just to not get out of the way. And then I'll make up for it with a funny one. If you have any acquaintance with like homo vocabulary and obnoxious college students, you'll love it. Um, and then finish off, if you're ready for a third one, finish off with a pretty little one, just to reward you for your time. Okay. Um, so this one's called The Handsome River. It's the most recent of the bunch. Um, the river in question, of course, is not nearly so handsome as the Thames. Oh, they're here. Um, one of the most beautiful jogging trails I've ever Oh, okay. Digging up tubers from the lurid earth with careful hands, brushing the clung loam and gently reburying the pink writhing worm, murmuring perhaps a small conic lullaby, then laying, laying the pale meaty stalks like bricks in the basket, side by slender side, silent and still. Careful hands tucking a stray sprig of nut-brown hair back under the faint blue bandana wrapped around her head to keep the nut-brown hair away from her busy eyes, her vacant, gray, cloudy, bleary, busy eyes, gently attending to a pink, writhing worm. Gathering up her basketful of tubers and a wide, squat crate of mean little tomato and a tin of blackberries, and her spade and savage talons trowel and retiring to the tremulous shed to bathe the lean crop in the gray basin beside the pitted cutting board. It was an easy adjustment once the crying had ceased. The piece was massive, like an overcast frontier and fixed as the stars or the salt in the sea. Without books or voices, things ceased to carry names. Every pepper and mouse was a sign unto itself and ontology faded into obscurity. The air was clean, the way space is clean, clean as an empty cupboard, and mealy grass began to overtake the blasted fields, while feathery seeds of rotorol swarmed on the wind like flies. In the quiet light of dawn, the worms gingerly poked up their blind round heads among the dewy blades. A naked roots rinsed upon the rocks, and a toad floating with its fat legs in the frothy air, bushels of swampy millet seeping and slopping along the coursing ecstatically violent, ten million oozing tons of puffing millet drooling down the iron river, and a dribbling camera lapped by little testimonies of seared skin and lolling tongues and bubbling eyes, vacant, bleary, wasted eyes, a sofa married to mildew, spoke sporting a single wicked spring, winding and winding up and sharp and slim and winding, a little damp bit of flannel dangling at the tip like meat on a meat hook, innocuous spheres of ants bobbing in the dull water, bursting against rocks, flinging nightmares of dispossessed chalicerae, flickering down the iron river, a cake of depleted cores, a ravaged failsafe, twenty-four cascading switches akimbo, wheels, treads, limbs, organic chambered fire darlings huddled in their surface to air cocoons, wings damp with profane oils, and electric nest sizzling, the shadow of an absent mother rippling down the Iron River, green strands of the last great album filtering through the torrid air, an upended bottle of number seven, a plastic bin of old mixtapes carefully labeled by thin red pin that runs in the surging flood, a cabinet full of spices and dried garden herbs spilled to soggy ruin, a chipped and stained action figure with a tiny plastic grenade in his tiny plastic hand, and a toy mare with a broken comb tangled in her dirty mane. Yeah. A red-tongued steak knife wielding a buttery melody, a round chocolate box, and lasciviously sucking of the sweet funny dew, the magnanimous, the baronic, the consequential, the rare, the handsome Iron River.
wiping the broad knife across her apron and sliding it back tenderly into the ripe skin, wiping the juice and the seeds away as they squirt across her hand. She finally lays the tomato slices and the cucumber slices across the dense little bun of bread and spreads an oily clove of baked garlic. She raises the knife to her lips. She can almost taste 